Hi, I'm Barry Ostrowski. At RWJ Barnabas Health, we believe that everyone needs to be informed about the important health care issues affecting their lives. That's why we're proud to support the important educational programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato in your neighborhood, Camden, has been provided by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, RWJ Barnabas Health, the Russell Berry Foundation, Choose New Jersey. Our mission is attracting companies to the Garden State, Rowan University, educating New Jersey leaders, partnering with New Jersey businesses, transforming New Jersey's future, and by Wells Fargo. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Family Magazine and njfamily.com and by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. This is One on One. I'm an equal American just like you are. The jobs of tomorrow are not the jobs of yesterday. Look at this. You got this? Here it is, man. Look at that. Life without dance is boring. <laughs> when you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? Do you enjoy talking politics? No. People call me because they feel nobody's paying attention. Our culture, I don't think, has ever been tested the way it's being tested right now. That's a good question. High five. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. This is uh, part of NJTV's In Your Neighborhood series. We're in beautiful Camden, New Jersey, and we are proud to be uh, interviewing two very special people. A uh, gentleman that is no stranger to the folks in this Camden area, uh, World Be Free. He is ambassador to Sixers basketball. We'll talk about that career in just a second. And Amy Heaver is executive director of community engagement um, and the Sixers at the Sixers Youth Foundation. How are you doing? Good, good, thank you. Now this guy's special, very special, <laughs> no? He is. Uh, he is part of Camden, Philadelphia lore with the Philadelphia 76ers, is he not? Absolutely. Now, you played from what years? Well, I came in uh, prehistoric days. I uh, came in back <laughs> in 75, and uh, I retired uh, in 89, 89, 90. This is part of the In Your Neighborhood series that the art production company, the Caucus Educational Corporation, is contributing uh, to this great uh, initiative in your neighborhood with NJTV. But the Sixers and Camden have a very tight connection, do they not? Well, you always have. Um, ever since I've been here, um, we always came over to Camden and, and, and did some things with the schools because, uh, you know, doing speaking engagements, things like that, as uh, far as talking about success, failures, drugs, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just being positive and trying to, you know, let's, and I always talked about letting kids know that, look, you have an opportunity to do something. I'm from the projects myself, I'm from New York City, from Brooklyn. And, uh, you know, I got out. So, I mean, it can happen for anybody, not only in basketball, sports, anything that you do positive, you can get out. These kids, these kids in Camden, what are they facing? And I explained to folks, I mean, I was born and raised in Newark, New Jersey, and there's Newark, there's Brooklyn, there's Camden. It's all not the same, but not that much different. But for those who may not know Camden and what these kids are facing, describe it. Yeah, it's very true. I mean, we look at the statistics, and we look at the statistics of the city of Camden, I mean, certainly there are a lot of changes, or a lot of challenges, rather, around poverty. There's a lot of deep poverty and poverty that exists in this city. And when we talk about the work that we do here in the community, and it really it dovetails off of a lot of what World says, is we know we have the ability, um, I think the power and the obligation, to really serve as a change agent here through sport. And, you know, what we hope over time is that we can use sport as that vehicle for some sustainable change over time. Describe it a little bit. I mean, the Sixers Youth Foundation. Give us a couple of examples of, of exactly the kind of work you're doing and the impact you're having. The foundation is really somewhat new, so we just really started to get our programs rolling as of last year. And now that we're here in Camden, we hope to really get it up to a full run, meaning how can we deeply embed ourselves in all neighborhoods across this city? And one of the ways in which we do that is the work that we do out in the community. So we're looking at courts as an, as an example that we can go out and renovate. How do we increase safe places to play? And that's one thing. And that's you know, really in the more traditional sense of how we view the opportunities around using the power of basketball as a tool for change. The other is work that we do in the classrooms. So we actually have two programs that are embedded here in Camden. 
uh, one at Kip Lanning and the other one at Cooper's Point, both of which are programs where we took the actual lessons that one can learn from sport mm. and use those as character building, as life success training opportunities for these students. So essentially, how do we use this game as an opportunity to help them grow and become leaders, the next generation of leaders? Well, talk about that a little bit. I mean, you're, for those who do not know or may not remember this guy and how incredibly talented he was, the world uh, had a 44-inch vertical leap. Still have it? Uh, we'll talk get, later. Can't get, Sunday, <laughs> can't get over the Sunday news now. but 44-inch uh, <laughs> uh, uh, vertical leap. 360-degree uh, leap in a flamboyant playing style. That's an understatement, by the way. For those of us who are Knicks fans, we were in pain every time you played against us. Thank but, you know, the connection between basketball and life skills. Talk about them. Well, we, we had a, a program, and we used to call it the Each One Teach One thing. It was a thing that, you know, with the adults come out and try to show the kids the right way to go and do the right things. As far as, uh, you know, trying to, and, and playing basketball was a real vehicle for getting, getting the attention of the kids. Uh, you have to realize that when, you, when you're dealing with young people, if you don't get them that first 30 seconds, you know, you really don't have them. You know, and the thing is, what we try to do is give them something that they like. You know, it might not be basketball, it might be football, it could be baseball, it could be any kind of sport that somebody that they're interested in. And we try to go ahead and target that to get their attention and bring them home. But that. what? But what life skill? What are we really talking about? Getting up and functioning and doing the things you need to do every day are those life skills? Those are life skills. Yeah, I mean, like you have to look at it when you when you when kids. When kids see grown-ups, mm. they try to imitate what we do, you know. And a lot of times, you know, a lot of times things are not going right for them in the, in the cities. And, you know, they follow the wrong group. I can go to, like, schools, middle schools. I can go to high schools. I can talk to kids. And kids will tell me, they'll come up and tell me. They say, well, and I ask them, I would say, like, well, why, are you in, why are you playing hooky or something like that? Or doing worse. Oh, yeah, yeah, or doing worse. And you know what they'll tell me? They said, well, I can make more money than you in a day just, stand, just walking around the streets here doing what I do. And I said, oh, man. I said, that's sad. They said, no, that's life. And that's what they tell me. So I'm looking at them like, OK, you know, but you know, you should go ahead and at least try to do something different. So if someone else is looking at you, you can help that other person because, you know, you went wrong. Somebody else can go, can go right. You know, Amy, as you're listening to World talk about these kids and, and a very skewed sense of life, but the re that's the reality they face, you're trying to send them what message? So what we're trying to do is, with the work that we're doing, it, it, it speaks exactly what World says. We have to engage them and right at that moment. And it comes in varying ways, shapes, and methods, and, and how we do so. And it really, it's a matter of harnessing the energy of the game. And so what does that translate into? It gives us a window and an opportunity, if we can capture that attention, to teach them things about communication about teamwork, mm -hmm. about pushing for greatness, and ultimately boiling down to you know, wanting to value and care and respect oneself and wanting to value and care and respect for others. These are skills that one would need to have, certainly in the school setting, at home, throughout every step and stage of one's life. And, and really, I think we have an opportunity not to certainly solve this complex problem around poverty, but certainly be one of those supporting elements. You're bullish about uh, Camden? I think you know, coming here to Camden, it's not only a tremendous opportunity, obviously, for the Sixers and to build this world-class facility, but there, there is so much growth, there's so much opportunity here. And as it relates to the work that's being done in the communities, there are so many organizations, whether it's through other businesses and their social responsibility efforts or other nonprofit organizations, like the ability to create partnerships that really, I think, can catalyze change here is tremendous. Final question, Will. Camden, great city? Oh, Camden's a great city. Camden's been... And existed for a long time. I've been to about like uh, at least about six mayors in the city, <laughs> and you know? you're still here. And I'm still here, <laughs> you know. And uh, I, and I, I, I seen it come, you know. And I, I'm like seeing it. I seen it grow. I seen it down, and I seen it come mm. back. And as we can see, things are just starting to grow back here again. It's starting to be a beautiful place again. I want to thank you, world. I want to thank you, Amy. We appreciate it uh, from beautiful Camden. Thank you. And uh, I want to. Ask folks to stay with us as we continue our In Your Neighborhood series as a part of this great NJ TV initiative. To watch more one on one with Steve Adubato programs, find us online and follow us on social media. 
Welcome back to One on One. Steve Adubato here. More importantly, this is part of our In Your Neighborhood initiative in collaboration with our partners at NJTV. And we're proud to welcome um, Major Terry Wood, Administrator, Salvation Army, Croc Community Center in Camden. Good to see you. Thank you, Steve. Now let's uh, explain what the Croc Center is. Named after? Named after uh, Ray and Joan Croc. It's a core community center here in Camden and uh, 120 square foot facility on a 24 acre campus. And uh, we're here to serve the community and try to help transform lives. And Ray Kroc, in fact, was uh, the founder of McDonald's. Absolutely. And they contributed a huge amount of money to this initiative. If I'm not, not mistaken, uh, Joan Kroc, who passed in 2003, um, left $1.5 billion to the Salvation Army to build centers like this all across the country. Correct, yes. Uh, before she passed away, she had actually built one in San Diego, the first center. And after she saw the impact that it was having on the community, the lives of those individuals in that depressed neighborhood, she decided she wanted to replicate that throughout the United States. Now, Major, um, President Obama was in fact here at the Croc Center in 2015 talking about community policing and the importance of a center like this. Talk about this center, talk about the work that it does and why it's so important in Camden, Major. Well, absolutely, we are here for the community. Uh, we serve the surrounding communities as well, but our emphasis is always gonna be on Camden. That was Joan Croc's vision. She wanted underserved communities to have the same resources uh, that anyone else would have in more affluent areas so that individuals who have tremendous potential can reach that potential in a center such as this. Such programs as? Well, you name it, we have so many programs. We have dozens of fitness programs. We have educational programs. Uh, our uh, daycare center will open this fall, um, educational activities, and also resources for the community, health fairs, job fairs, and many other opportunities for the community to come in and really improve their, their situation. Major, you see the children here every day. And by the way, this initiative is supported by um, the good people at the Ryzen Foundation who've been very supportive as well. But when I'm, and they're very committed to children. So I'm curious about this. The children of Camden face what types of challenges? Well, a safe environment is certainly one of them. Um, and so certainly as we have this wonderful facility, we want to make sure when they come into our facility that they're in a safe environment, but also that they have access to state-of-the-art things um, such as the arts programs that we do, uh, theater programs. Uh, we have a competition swimming pool, an indoor water park. So they have amenities that would not normally be seen in this, in this neighborhood. And it helps them in what ways? I mean, what kind of impact can it, does it have in terms of providing an opportunity for them to reach their potential as young men and women and go beyond there? Certainly. We certainly want to develop the skills, the various skills that they would have. We have a swim team here. We have uh, children from the community who never knew how to swim. Now they're competing against individuals in other communities nearby um, and doing incredibly well. So it's wonderful to see children who uh, you know, did not know how to swim a few weeks ago competing against others who have had this opportunity all their lives. What would Camden be like without the Croc Center? That's hard to say, and I wouldn't want to envision it. Um, thankfully, uh, we were blessed with this facility, um, and I was not in Camden before it existed. Uh, we're privileged to serve here as administrators, um, but uh, certainly you, just to see the light of the kids when they come in and see that their eyes open up as they see a water park um, and know that it's here for them. That's why, in fact, you call this a beacon of light. Certainly, that's Joan Crock's vision that would be a, a beacon of light and hope in a community that de desperately needs it. Um, Major Terry Wood, dedicating his life and, and so many others here at the Crock Center on behalf of these young people and so many others in the city of Camden. We thank you for taking some time with us as part of the In Your Neighborhood initiative that the folks at NJTV are part of and we at the Caucus Educational Corporation are a part of as well. Thank you so much, Major. Thank you. Stay with us in beautiful, from beautiful Camden, New Jersey. We'll be right back right after this. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you'd like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Welcome back to One on One. It is our pleasure to welcome Tawanda Jones, who is the co-founder of a terrific organization here in Camden. Thank you. It is called Camden Sophisticated Sisters. What a great name. And you came up with that. 
Yes, sir, I did. How, how so? <laughs> well, uh, Camden Sophisticated Sisters kind of, the whole word sophisticated stuck with me because of my grandmother. Um, she was very articulate. She always believed that young ladies should sit up and have posture and uh, being sophisticated was her thing. So it kind of like mm. stuck in my head. So it just seemed like the perfect name to name the organization at the time. What does it do? Oh my God, what don't they do? <laughs> <laughs> it's a performing arts. Um, they don't just dance. Oh my God, they, they dance their pain away. They sing, they act. Um, they're, they have to do volunteer, uh, volunteer hours. They have to do 200 um, hours of volunteer hours. So uh, it's a community-based organization. And we welcome the youth. We welcome um, adults. It's just one big community um, inside of the neighborhood center. 4,000 children have successfully, successfully come through the program. 100% graduation rate. 90% of team members attend higher education institutions. Amazing. That's How does that happen? It takes... Um, I would be crazy to say, you know, I did this by myself. No successful organization is ran by one person, but it takes a collective effort. It takes community, parents, teachers, um, everyone involved just to stay on track with these young people. See, we just don't do drill team inside of one place. You know, we have to make sure that we're interacting with them at their homes, um, inside the schools. I love doing pop-up visits at the schools. You know, pop just up? pop-up visits. Describe that. Pop-up visits. Um, if you have a kid that, you know, they're part of the organization and they're having like a rough week, you know, I'll get that phone call from the teacher. Of, I know they're a part of your organization. Um, Behavior-wise, we're having a little difficult time. We're on our way. You pop up. We pop up. I pop up. The parents pop up. Um, we have a little volunteer group that loves to do the little pop-up thing. So, and the kids shape up. They just want to mm -hmm. know. That they love structure. They love discipline. Mm -hmm. Kids want to know that you're going to be there. I got to tell you, it, it, when I first heard about you, it was first in 2013, the great folks at CNN recognized your organization as one of the top 10 uh, heroes of that year. Also in 2014, I met you, um, the Russell Berry Foundation, um, the Make a Difference Award, you were one of the winners, one of the $5,000 winners. You've been recognized in so many places by so many organizations. You're born and raised in the city. You love this city. What yes. is it that these young women are facing every day? Oh, my God. Um, poverty, drugs, the violence. You know, but um, we're here to tell them that you can overcome any obstacle. You know, you don't let that stop you. As a matter of fact, you go even harder. And we just want to let them know that we have, um, you have a great support system here. Even if you have, even if your, your household is in disarray, you know, you have an extra extended family in Camden Sophisticated Sisters. To what degree do you consider yourself, because you are a product of this city, a role model? Well, I'm, I'm no saint. I'm no perfect person. I didn't ask if you were a saint. I said, but you are a role model, and you know yes, they look I try up to, to be. you. I and try you are to be. from this city. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Is that pressure? It's a lot of pressure. You know, um, you're, you're constantly in the eye. You know, people want to, you know, you, am I going to mess up? Am I doing this correctly? All I can do is just stay prayed up um, and just... Stay um, prayed just up. Stay prayed up. I have to put on that armor of God. You know, I'm, I'm not afraid to mention his name, you know, and... Um, that's, that's what really keeps me going, as well as my husband and my family and, you know, my support system, you know, people that I lean on. Because it gets difficult sometimes, but um, because I love it and it's a passion and it's not work, you know, because I'm very passionate about it. It what makes it that much it? easier. What do you get out of this? Oh, my God, the smiles, the joy, the kids coming back to me and saying, you know, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have made it this far. And I'm like, don't give me that much credit, but just know that we are still here for you. Um, that revolving door of the kids that already went through the program and make me feel old by bringing their children back to my program, <laughs> you know. But um, that's, that's the part that makes me feel like, oh, we're, we must be doing something right. So for people watching one-on-one -on -one as part of this uh, In Your Neighborhood initiative, together with our great partners at NJTV, who are trying to talk about neighborhoods, communities all across the state, who may not really understand Camden. They, they think they know because they they see things on the national news, right. crime, violence, a part of the city, mm -hmm. but not the totality of the city. Not at all. What's the rest of the city? Put it this way, there's a Camden everywhere. In the suburbs, there's, there's a Camden everywhere. You know, um, uh, turmoil, um, a lot of social woes. 
you know, but you have to get the, 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 the root of the problem, mm. you know. Um, I feel like my thing of contributing to my city mm. is definitely with the youth. You know, let's get these babies while they're young so when they grow up to be productive citizens, it'll be that much easier to say, you know, how can you get involved? How can you make this change? Tawanda Jones, who is a, the co-founder of Camden Sophisticated Sisters, you're doing great things thank every day so with much. a great team, and we, um, we thank you for what you do. Thank you. In your neighborhood. Yeah, thank you. Stay with us as uh, this great series continues right after this. To watch more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, find us online and follow us on social media. Welcome back. We are pleased uh, to welcome to the show Victor Murray, who is uh, Program Director, Care Management Initiative, the Camden Coalition of Healthcare Providers. Good to see you, Victor. Good to see you, too. Describe your organization. Yeah, so uh, the Camden Coalition is a fascinating uh, organization uh, it, made up of a really mixed bucket of work. Uh, we have data, uh, engagement, and then also clinical uh, redesign. Uh, when we talk about data uh, at the Camden Coalition, really we use it to drive uh, rich uh, and targeted conversations with you know, providers, uh, community, uh, residents, and also institutions. Uh, we also use our data uh, to identify uh, re really targeted uh, subsets of the population to address them uh, by means of interventions. Uh, when we think about uh, engagement, that's engagement on a number of different levels. And so that's engagement of the community, residents, I'm working with them uh, in the homes, hospitals, mm -hmm. um, across behavioral health, uh, mental health systems. Um, that's also engagement on a policy uh, level as well. Um, and then when we talk about clinical redesign, uh, basically that just means we have to do things differently. Uh, the healthcare system as we know it uh, doesn't work uh, and it's not efficient. And so uh, it's more about change management. Let me ask you, the community of Camden, just two or three of the most significant healthcare challenges people face in this community. Yeah, so it's a lot of barriers, uh, as you can imagine, uh, when we think about, you know, just Camden in its totality uh, and the social structure that's kind of built up. But if I had to name two, I would probably say one is housing uh, for many of uh, the patients. As a health issue? As a health issue. How so? Um, believe it or not. And so uh, housing is really health care. Uh, if a person is not housed, then how can they manage their health needs? Uh, if I don't have a home uh, with a refrigerator, uh, then where can I place my insulin uh, for my diabetes? And so really, it's a core, it's fundamental uh, for persons to be able to address their health needs in an effective manner. Beyond that. Beyond Housing, that. what else? I would say transportation, just access. Uh, is it, yeah, you smile, believe it or not. Most of us just... Transportation, yeah. a health issue. A health issue. Can't get to... The health care that I need. Yeah, access. So how do you, how does your organization, the Camden Coalition of Healthcare Providers, how do you help people who are dealing with housing problems, transportation problems? Yeah, and so I think it's looking at health care in a very broad uh, view. Uh, health care is more than just physical health. Uh, health care encompasses mental health, behavioral health, addictions, mm -hmm. substance abuse, housing, uh, employment, transportation, all of those things that you mentioned. And so I think um, it's expanding our view of uh, what those things include and the impact that that has uh, on the population that we serve. But you also work very closely. The Camden Coalition works very closely with, in fact, hospitals, primary care uh, physicians, others. Describe that. Yeah, and so I think uh, that's some of our most impactful work. Um, really, for us, it's about communication and collaboration across those systems. When you talk about hospitals, uh, mental health, behavioral health, oftentimes those are very siloed institutions and information data isn't allowed to cross uh, across those systems. And so uh, we as a you know organization deem it our responsibility to make sure that across those organizations, people are communicating and those institutions are communicating so that our patients uh, can be cared for in an appropriate manner. But how does that actually change the impact of the quality, the care that people get? If hospitals and physicians are talking more and breaking down barriers and sharing information, what difference does that really make? Yeah, because you know people are on the same page when it comes to care. And so it's something as simple as our health information exchange. Uh, we're using that now uh, really to start uh, case conferencing in a region. So among five different hospitals, uh, persons who have extreme behavioral health needs and continue to go uh, to the emergency departments to suffice uh, those needs, or, uh, those institutions are now using the health information exchange health information exchange uh, to do case conferencing and to talk more um, about this population. Real quick, uh, hot spotting is? 
student hotspot. Again, so that's really looking uh, towards the next generation of healthcare providers. We're working with about 40 different schools uh, across the country. Uh, we've touched more than about 600 students. And so basically, we have five students uh, from each of these schools that range from uh, med school students, uh, social work students, nursing students, uh, farm students, business students, and they work to target a specific high cost patient in their community. Uh, we provide educational support, TA support, as well as a uh, case conferencing so that they can begin to understand what it means uh, to work with a team and collaborate more around this subset of the population. Final question, how rewarding for you? Uh, extremely rewarding. You know, I'm from the city, uh, born and raised in the city. You're and born so, and raised in Camden. Born and raised in Camden. Yep. My grandma uh, lived right around the corner, actually. Um, and so just to see uh, this work and just to see people progress uh, is really impactful and it means a lot. Victor Murray, who is a program director, care management initiative at a terrific organization called the Camden Coalition of Healthcare Providers. I want to thank you for being part of this very special initiative called In Your Neighborhood that we're doing in collaboration with our partners, in fact, at NJTV. Um, this has been one-on-one. -on -one. I want to thank all of you for watching. Make sure we see you next time. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One-on-One -on -One with Steve Adubato, In Your Neighborhood, Camden, has been provided by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, RWJ Barnabas Health, the Russell Berry Foundation, Choose New Jersey, Rowan University, and by Wells Fargo. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. New Jersey invented the light bulb. It keeps us well lit and monster free. Today, New Jersey produces megawatt mines that power innovation. Choose New Jersey and enter a state of brilliance.